I'm Faisa Keir, Birkbeck's Academic Registrar, and I'm really delighted to welcome you to Birkbeck's virtual graduation, our first virtual graduation, and to take this opportunity to congratulate you on reaching this milestone in your studies. We know it has been an incredibly difficult year for most of you because of the global pandemic. I'm really pleased that you've made it here today to celebrate and mark your fantastic achievements alongside family, friends and of course your fellow students. We know that today will be different to your usual in-person graduation ceremony, but we have worked hard to ensure that it mirrors the spirit of them and we hope that you will feel it does. We'll also be hosting in-person celebratory events for you so that you can meet your classmates and lecturers once it's safe to do so. We'll let you know more about these at a later date. Before we start today's event, we have some housekeeping information for you. Please keep your microphone muted until the round of applause after each group's names are announced. We hope you'll take part in giving a big round of applause to celebrate our graduate successes. You should be able to change the screen on the device you're watching on today. If you can, we suggest putting your screen in presenter view to view all videos and live content in full screen. You can select gallery view if you want to see everyone in your virtual room, but this will make the videos appear smaller. And if you are watching on an iPad or an iPhone, you may need to scroll to another screen to see everyone in your group. We'd like to remind everyone that today's event has been recorded it is currently being live streamed on YouTube and the recording will also be available after the event. We'll start today's event with some messages before moving on to the awards. Thank you very much indeed for taking part today and we hope you enjoy it. Graduating students of 2020, Congratulations on attaining your degree, particularly given the circumstances in which you completed the last few months of your studies. Every student experience is unique, but I think everyone will remember 2020 as different. Whenever I attend University of London engagements, I'm constantly struck by the enthusiasm and energy that you display for your studies and the range and achievements of your non-academic activities. With the world facing challenges none of us could have envisaged a few short months ago, and at a pace that requires flexibility and innovation, the skills and knowledge that you have acquired while at university are needed now more than ever to help reshape the future for us all your institution will support you now and into the future in your endeavours. While you may be missing the formal graduation ceremony this year, I hope you will retain the friends, the experiences and the knowledge you gain during your studies. They will all be part of your foundation for the future. Once again, my congratulations and I wish you every success as you embark on the next stage of your lives. Welcome to this graduation ceremony, in which above all, we celebrate the achievements of you, our graduates. Those are the words that I use on normal graduation ceremonies when we have perhaps half a dozen large ceremonies in the Senate House of the University of London. This time, of course, circumstances are different. I'm speaking to you live at 18 ceremonies this week, and I'm doing this rather than pre-recording our message because I want to give you as personally as possible my congratulations on your tremendous achievements. All Birkbeck students, graduates successfully juggle work and study and family responsibilities. But you have had to do this in far greater measure. Perhaps there have been health issues. Perhaps, of course, there have been difficulties with your work. And perhaps you've had to compete for IT equipment or for space at the kitchen table with your partner or with other members of your household. So these are tremendous achievements that you have managed to overcome all this and achieve successfully your graduation today. 
I want to also particularly thank your relatives and friends who I know are watching on YouTube. Thank you for all your efforts in allowing perhaps use of the IT equipment or the kitchen table, or perhaps sorting out your children and making sure that they were occupied while your partner was studying. But I do have a message for you other than just thanks. Birkbeck is for everyone. For the very first time, we will be starting courses in January as well as having started in the autumn. So now is your opportunity to perhaps get your revenge, to seize back the kitchen table and the IT equipment and to come and study with Birkbeck. So that is an offer to everyone based on the magnificent work of our staff who helped you, I know, tremendously our graduates during the spring and summer to conclude your studies and also to take your exams. We now have a fully online offering, except in a few laboratory-based subjects, which allows our students to continue to study safely without having to fall foul of the images we have seen from so many other universities of students cooped up in halls of residence, moved across the country simply to study online in the same way as they could have done from home. So Birkbeck remains open for business and it remains a source of knowledge for anyone who wants it. For our graduates, I ask you to remain associated with us. Join the Alumni Society and you will receive this magnificent mug, which will allow you to remember Birkbeck when you have a coffee or a tea in the future. But equally, don't just remain associated with us. Campaign for us and argue for us with those who you meet virtually. Government is finally thinking and listening about lifelong learning. It's proposing to introduce loans now for short courses and for one year study, even for those who already have a degree. But it is likely those loans will be subject restricted. And we know which subjects will be excluded, the arts subjects which you study. Government needs to have a joined up policy of not just supporting the arts with bailout and other funds, but also allowing people who perhaps have studied for, another, for an earlier degree to now retrain and play their role in the arts. So please join us in that campaign. But of course, today is ultimately about celebrating your achievements. You have joined the 197 year history of Birkbeck graduates in a way that is perhaps unique, that stands comparison with those who graduated during the Second World War when Birkbeck was the only University of London institution to remain in London during the Blitz. Several years ago, when I joined a meeting of a number of business leaders and was introduced as being the head of Birkbeck, one of them said to me, when I see Birkbeck on a CV, I put that CV to the top of my pile because those people have the commitment that I want in my business. How much more true is that this year? You may have graduated under difficult circumstances, but for the rest of your lives, that will be recognized by employers and others. People will realize what you, the class of 2020, had to do in order to graduate. I and all of Birkbeck salute you for your achievements. Thank you. This has been a really difficult and stressful year and we're incredibly proud of how you've managed it and steered your way through it. And although we would have loved for you to be having a day of graduation where you meet everybody face to face and hug and kiss and celebrate, we know you'll do your creative best to make this a good day. So from everybody here in the Department of English, Theatre and Creative Writing, we are saying to you, well done and congratulations. Good afternoon, everyone.
Um, I'd like to thank you for attending this virtual graduation today and congratulate you all on your success. Wish you all the very best for your future and to uh, urge you to keep in touch with us here at Birkbeck in the School of Arts. So, Vice Chancellor, President and distinguished guests, I present the following graduates from the School of Arts. For a BA in Arts and Humanities, Rebecca Barnett, Anya Bissett, Nina Darushi, Judy Dunwoody, Marilyn Edward, Jonathan Fell, David, David Haberman, Anders Karlstrom, Agnieszka Kostrichka, Mikhail Matushak. For an MA in Contemporary Literature and Culture, Jack Beard, Mariella Bryan, Camilla Cabras, Victoria Connor, Orla Cubitt, Francesca Di Berardino, Samuel Dolman, Patrick Malone, Jemima Quist Brown, Warren Shaw. For a BA in Creative Writing, Elizabeth Bolton, Emile Cardullo, Deborah Charles, Dean Davis, and Maria Fernandez Gomez. So I'd like to invite you now to unmute, to clap, to cheer, to celebrate in any way that you'd like. Congratulations, everyone. Fantastic. Hi, everyone. So for a BA in Creative Writing, Terence Freeman, Lindsay Garrett, Diane Giscombe, Tommaso Hodge, Amina Candle, Sally Larson, Megan Massey, Marsha McKenzie, Isabel McNulty, Iona Mendoza, Molly Methven, Luke Newman, Matthew Nobbs, Nicolette Quigley, Stoyan Radic, Catherine Scanlon, Samuel Simmons, Nicola Smith, Jennifer Smith, Dana Ward. And for an MA in Creative Writing, Francesca Albury, Tatum Anderson, Goran Baba, Ella Burney, and Louisa Brownlee. Congratulations, everyone. Please unmute and give yourself a round of applause, a cheer, um, and celebrate wherever you'd like. Well done. Hi there. For an MA in Creative Writing, Maria Callo, Valentine Carter, Kaylee Cassidy, Maria Christina Correra de Araujo Baum, Emily Critchley, Sarah Dale, Cedric um, Demchinsky, Jane Dugdale, Ronan Fitzgerald, Dalvinda Galli, Adrian Graham, Courtney Hadfield, Tabitha Harmon Potts, Lawrence Ilsley, Indigit Kurana, Mickey Lentin, Megan Rose Lewis, Lauren Marshive, Anya Martin, Ryan Mouton, Martin Nathan, Alexandra Petropoulos, Aisha Phoenix, Saba Sams, Milka Skulach Senate, and Katie Willis. Congratulations, everyone. Please unmute and give yourself a big cheer, round of applause. And, a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and many, many congratulations from you. Well done. Hi there. For an MA in Creative Writing, Timothy Sellers, Sandra Springer, Nicolau Sultanen, Daniel Sung, Ruth Balby, and Joanna Whitaker. And for a Diploma in Higher Education in Creative Writing in English, Joseph Akavana. For a BA in Creative Writing in English, Dominic Archer, Bora Aigun, Alexander Bolshaw, Matteo Chaloro, Zaina Chowdhury, Baltazar Coella, Stephanie Hayes, Aidan Morris, Amanda Pegram, Hazel Skelton, Zena Telford. For a postgraduate diploma in Cultural and Critical Studies, Lawrence Binney, and for an MA in Cultural and Critical Studies, Sarah Bell, Agatha Connolly, Nuno da Silva, Timothy Footman, and Martinus Hins. 
So please unmute and give yourself a big cheer, big round of applause, um, and celebrate however you want, but congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> well done, everyone. Hi there. So for an MA in Cultural and Critical Studies, James Humphrey, James Kernick, Simon King, Hannah Marcus, Charlie Murdoch, David Porter, Ferdinand Simon, Frederick Spolier, Gerrit Stridham, Lucy Swan, and Tobias Faudry. And for a BA in English, Mahmoud Ahmed, Christopher Allen, Sajid Ayed, Zachary Bamford, <clears throat> excuse me, Safia Butt, Jade Conroy, Javeria Kumar, Jacqueline Dawkins, Elizabeth Doyle, Aziza El Hafawi, Amal Ghani, Elizabeth Griffiths, Helga Heitman, and Hamda Ismail. So please unmute and give yourself a big round of applause. Many, many congratulations. Well done. Great stuff. Well done. Hi there. So for a BA in English, Rachel Lee, Megan LaRue, Yousaf Mahmoud, Milica Milinova, David Papworth, Luke Rudderham Cozier, Barty Samaru, Kenneth Taxeth, Emma Tarran, Matthew Tilly, and Juliet Whale. And for an MA in Medieval Literature and Culture, Grace Hawkins. And for a postgraduate certificate in Modern and Contemporary Literature, Deborah Brooks and Munira Janath. And for a postgraduate diploma in Modern and Contemporary Literature, Russell Lincoln. And for an MA in Modern and Contemporary Literature, India Audsley, Danielle Boyle, James Clark, Nicola Davis, Alexander Dry, Roger Francis, Mary Graham, Lawrence Jones, Paul Jamal, and Michael Kelly. So well done, everyone. Please unmute your microphones and give yourself a big round of applause. Uh, big cheer. Great stuff. Well done. Congratulations. Hi there. So for an MA in Modern and Contemporary Literature, we have Harriet Lamb, Philip Lawrence, Harry Lee, Laura Mauro, Carmela Morgillo, Thomas Tidnam, and Caris Williams. And for a postgraduate diploma in Renaissance Studies, Leslie Monk. And for an MA in Renaissance Studies, Nazreen Ahmed, William Christie, Kevin Clark, Amanda Desmond, Jonathan Hamston, Nigel Smith, and Humaira Yasmin. For a postgraduate certificate in text and performance, Zinat Nabi and Angela Shepherd. And for an MA in text and performance, Jana Chenenko, Kelly Coughlin, Helen Dallas, Philippine De Bruyne Cops, Emma Finnan, Cody Freischlag, Lauren Gurnes, and Morgan Gooding Silverwood. Congratulations, everyone. Please unmute and give yourself a big cheer, big round of applause. Congratulations. Yay! Well done. Well done. Hi there. So for an MA in text and performance, Alicia Kadaiji, Kinga Kliss, Charles Mayo, Victor Mellers, Emma Muir-Smith, Freni Pavri, Esther Rudhart, Christina Shellhas, Janine Swarbrick, Ashley Tott, Adelina Uglo, and Tallulah Vaughan. And for a BA in Theatre and Drama, Selen Adem, Malika Chowi, Eliza Ditter, Maria Lajlo, Natalie St. Clair, and for an MA in Theatre Directing, Lucy Allen, Joanna Bowman, Hannah Kalas Kalashione, Esther Dix, Jesse Horton Shaw, Jack McMahon, Lucy Molden, and Diane Page. 
Congratulations, everyone. So please unmute, give yourself a big round of applause, a big cheer. Well done. Congratulations. Fabulous. Hi there. So for an MA in Theatre Directing, Sarah Stacey, Isabella Turner and Thomas Williamson. And for a postgraduate diploma in Victorian Studies, Jasmine Woodruff Cam. For an MA in Victorian Studies, Yasmin Achter, Francesca Anand, Eleanor Bailey, Eleanor Best, Susan Budge, Claire Crockstarkey, Ruby Davy. Thelma Naidu, Colin Penman, Paul Richards, Caroline Stretfield, Claudia Vogt, Charlotte Wright. For a PhD in Cultural Studies with the title Reading the Collective Subject, Three Moments of Crisis, Aftermath and the Aesthetics of Resistance, Claudia Firth. For a PhD in English with the title Early Science Fiction and, uh, and Occultism, Aaron Rukema. For a PhD in English and Humanities with the title Scars of the Visible, The Politics of the Image in Contemporary Experimental Fiction, Daniel Barrow. For a PhD in English and Humanities with the title Uninterrupted Sounds, Samuel Beckett's Patients and the Cacophonous Clinical Encounter, Laura Cushing Harris. For a PhD in English and Humanities with the title Adorno, Dada, and the Philistine, the imminent negation of the institution of art, Paul Ingram. For a PhD in English and Humanities with the title Groundwork, Digital Approaches to Changes in Thomas Pynchon's Style, Eric Ketson. For a PhD in English and Humanities with the title British Women Writers and the Culture of Wild Nature, 1781 to 1815, James Leslie, and for a PhD in English and Humanities with the title, An Exploration of the Negative Dispositions that Influence the Judgment of Doctors, um, Pi, Pride, Vanity um, and Practice, Jan Naroki. So um, I'd invite you now to unmute your microphones and give yourself a huge cheer, um, big round of applause, many, many congratulations, everyone. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Okay, and hi there. So um, we have now a um, PhD in English and uh, sorry in English and Humanities with the title "The Epistolary Eye: Dorothy Richardson's um, Correspondence and the um, Trails of Modernism to Miss Shanks." Then for a PhD in English Literature with the title "Italian Futurism and the Development of English Literary Modernism, 1909 to 1915." to Robin Jakeman. For a PhD in English Literature with the title Delirious USA, the representation of capital in the fiction of Don DeLillo, Thomas Travers. For a PhD in English Literature and Contemporary Poetry with the title Impossible Telling in the Epistolary Form, Contemporary Poetry, Mourning and Trauma, to Francis Locke. To, for a PhD um, in Literature and Creative Writing with the title the Iranian Queer, to Gulnush Norpana, and for a PhD in Medieval Literature and Culture with the title The Agency of Arthurian Material Culture in the Later Mid Middle Ages to Matthew Clancy. Um, so please um, unmute and give yourselves a big round of applause and a big cheer. Congratulations, everybody. Great stuff. Well done. Warm congratulations. And that concludes the presentation of graduates from the School of Arts, and I'll now hand you over to my colleagues. President, Vice Chancellor, graduates and graduates, guests and colleagues. In these times of COVID-19, when social distancing has forced us to move the most significant date in the academic calendar, graduation, online, it is perhaps worth reflecting on some of the 
other crises that the college has faced during its long history of nearly 200 years. As you already know, Birkbeck was established as the London Mechanics Institution in 1823. It's impossible, I think, to exaggerate just how revolutionary the initiative was. At that time, one third of all men and one half of all women were unable to read or write. But more importantly, British elites were passionately hostile to educating working people. After all, the country was in political turmoil, and it was feared that educating the lower orders would destroy society. In particular, there was moral anxiety. 1825, Minister E. W. Grinfield fumed about the risks of educating working men. He argued that it would be far better that the common people of this country should remain totally illiterate than they should be thus furnished with tools by which they would inevitably work out their own and the public ruin. Educating women was also risky. The London Mechanics Institution was unique because as early as 1830, it allowed women to attend classes. This means that Birkbeck provided higher education for women long before other institutions in the UK. After all, women's colleges such as Queen's College in Harley Street was not founded until 1848 and Bedford College the following year. Now, admittedly, the Institutions Committee continued for at least three decades to debate the propriety of admitting females attending lectures through the front entrance. Nevertheless, allowing women to attend classes was extremely progressive. And that was what was considered dangerous. As one critic complained, might in this lead to social intercourse with the other sex, which cannot be beneficial to morality. So from its foundation, the London Mechanics Institution, Birkbeck, was unique. Crucially, the leaders of the college from 1823 to the present shared one central belief. Birkbeck is about its people. Their thoughts and ambitions, hopes and dreams, labors and laughter, hubris and failures. In sum, as we near the bicentenary of our founding, this is the time to celebrate the capacity of a Birkbeck education to help us become fully human and self-fulfilled by learning to use all our faculties knowledge, imagination, sympathy. Perhaps it is time to resurrect what used to be Birkbeck's anthem. Vita Cabdima was composed in 1913 and is largely forgotten today. But at the centenary of the college in 1923, it was sung vigorously. The chorus went like this. At the hub of all the world, London surging round us, keep we Birkbeck's flag unfurled. Nothing shall confound us. I can think of no better chorus for us today in the midst of epidemic. Today, like those times, we will not only survive, but flourish. You are now our alumni and we are incredibly proud of you. Congratulations to all of today's graduates. This is a big moment for you, for you individually, of course, but also for all of you together, knowing that another swathe of students has achieved their objectives and can now face the future confident of their skills. Congratulations too, to the Congratulations too to the academic staff of Birkbeck who've seen you on your way to today's success so well. 
Of course, the world in which you're graduating has changed and we're all learning new ways to live and new ways to study. Well, we're coming to cherish some of the benefits of this inconvenience, better air quality, bird song, but also more time for books, more silences. The world is not as noisy or as demanding as it once was. So there's more space for introspection about your life, your studies, and the ambitions you have for your place in the world. There's no better time for you to do this than now, when you've learned the habits of study, when you've developed the capacity to be alone with your thoughts and the skill to seek out evidence and for whatever insights and propositions your studies have led to. Your mind and your temperament have been over the years prepared for just such challenges as this unexpected pandemic is throwing at us. You've already coped with many of the adjustments you need to make to your teaching, and they've been necessary and they've been successful. Now you're well placed to make changes to your lives and indeed to the world. This world, our world, is in great need of new thinking, new ways to organize itself, its patterns of living, its institutions. I invite you to step forward, not just to help those innovations on their way, but to originate them yourselves. The world's needs can be met by your own ambitions and skills. One day, you'll look back and see how out of every crisis, important changes, even revolutionary changes, emerge. We stand at just such a tipping point right now. And you, at the moment of your graduation, are among those ready and able to take up that challenge. So my congratulations again to all of you and good luck to a difficult but amazing future. Thank you. Class of 2020. Welcome to the Birkbeck Alumni Community. You might be in the UK or much further afield. It might be morning, afternoon or evening. Wherever you are right now, we as fellow members of the Birkbeck Alumni Community want to send our congratulations to you for what you've achieved. Completing a course at Birkbeck in normal circumstances is by no means an easy endeavour. So what you have accomplished is really something truly special. Today you are graduating and you should take a moment to reflect what a huge accomplishment this is. Completing your studies does not mean the end of your Birkbeck journey. You are joining a community of over 60,000 alumni in over 140 different countries. So no matter where you are in the world, you won't be far from a fellow Birkbeck graduate. There are lots of exciting events, activities and opportunities for you to stay connected with Birkbeck. Visit bbk.ac.uk forward slash alumni to find out more and update your contact details. We are proud to share this day with you. Have a wonderful time celebrating. Congratulations. 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 Class of 2020.